Good afternoon, this is Jeff with Sewer Tech Northwest. We are at property address 6568 Southeast 96th Avenue here in Portland. Located up on the rooftop. Going through a four inch cast iron main vent. That's on the rooftop of the, uh, this house looks like it's had an addition put onto it. We're on the one level portion of it, the original part of the house. And anyway, we're gonna check the overall condition and serviceability of the sanitary sewer line. Water is a running. We're gonna zero out of the base of the uh, vent. Got some cobwebs to clean off the vent off the camera here in a second. Zero the foot counter out there at the bottom of the bed. And anytime I'm on a, I'm on a roof like this, especially when it's this sunny, um, I'm always going to review the video at home. That the sun glare I get, combined with just the, makes it hard for your eyes to adjust. It makes it hard to see fine detail. I can see general stuff fairly easily, but fine detail is what's hard to... So, anyway. I always will give you the disclaimer that there may very well be something I put on the report that I don't mention on the video. We just transitioned there over to four inch ABS plastic. Okay, and right there, we're gonna stop. The line's doing a straight vertical drop into the top of the main here. My camera right now is sitting directly over top of the main. It's a very common setup you have on neighborhoods with basement sewer lines. This, the mains in the street on these things sometimes are 14, 15 feet. Uh, my camera is not gonna round that bend, not that we're out 80 feet going through the vent. We're way into city responsibility at this point anyway. All right, located the camera head successfully. Line terminates out on Southeast 96th Avenue. And so as you face the house from the street, that's how I describe everything. Um, if you're looking at the driveway, the driveway skirt, if you're unfamiliar with that term, that's the last piece of driveway as the driveway attaches to the street. It'll usually flare out in the, like a skirt does. Anyway, at the uh, left side portion of the driveway skirt, you'll notice a rectangle uh, saw cut patch where they, you can tell that a piece of concrete was taken out and replaced there. That patch would appear to be where the sewer line was run. 
is where I, my locate comes in is perfectly in line with that. And based on where the vent stack is and everything, all that's lining up. So in case you're curious where the lines, line is situated, it gives you kind of an idea. Uh, it, it looks like just based on the locates I've got and kind of the route the line takes, um, the line looks like it shoots out of the house uh, just a couple feet away from where the, the right side portion of the house proper attaches to the garage. So to the right of the front door, but very near where the house meets the garage. That stringy stuff there you're looking at up ahead is just cobwebs. All the PVC pipe looks good. Drains very nicely. All the updated pipe here is spotless clean. Looks fantastic. This is exactly how you want your line to look right here. And, it, and it, will, it's, it gets this way and stays this way by one living habit for the most part. That's not putting cooking oil and grease down your line. That is the number one thing that gunks your pipes up. It's responsible for more blockages out than about anything you can do to your line. It'll, it'll ruin a perfectly good sewer line. And it's often what exacerbates a lot of structural issues into a real problem. Bellies, offset joints, things like that. And realistically, a lot of times, those don't cause problems, especially in updated piping, like plastic pipe, until the homeowner does stuff like that. Gunks the line up with a bunch of grease and then really helps it along when they flush a ball of flushable wipes down the toilet. And it all sticks. Now the cast iron part of the line, I've got a little better shade now. The cloud cover has come over. I might still do some reviewing at home. The, the flow line, the cast iron here, is showing some wear and tear. There is some scale buildup. That right there looks like a wipe. That's something you really want to avoid putting down uh, cast iron piping. Wipes and flushable wipes, they're, flushable wipes are terrible. And they, especially in older pipe materials like this, they really snag up. You can see that rough texture this stuff has. So anyway, there is a fair amount of scale buildup. I'm going to take a look at this at, at home. Um, I might recommend a descale and jet this cast iron out once I can get a little better view of it. But it's looking it's looking pretty darn thick, and it, and, it, and it's also looks like it's in the flow line. Anyway, sometimes and I until you clean it out, you really can't see the true bare metal. Um, to get a proper look at it, but when you when you start to get a pipe bottom that's that's not your typical round shape, circular shape, where it actually has kind of a lump to it, um, it's often a scale buildup layer. In a lot of cases, when you jet the line out and you have to jet cast iron very thoroughly, it's got to be done in conjunction with cameras to ensure you're blasting all the rust out of the line. Knocking it loose is not the hard part; it's blasting it all free. Uh, that takes some time, so you don't leave piles of it behind. Uh, but you want to rescope afterwards. Uh, a, a lot of times you end up with, with decent looking metal on the other side that's got plenty of longevity left in it. Uh, other times it, you, you strip that layer off there and you start uncovering pipe where it's channeling, where you're starting to get the metal eaten away. Um, so anyway, right now I don't know if it's at that point yet. I want to take a look at it in better lighting, but I may very well recommend that. All the updated pipe looks great, drains beautifully, is super clean, and overall the line is functioning at this time, but that cast iron, I may recommend something be done with it. 